now. Hi, welcome to the Camp Thunderbird Pacific Harbors Council pre-camp meeting. We are sorry that this isn't going to be live, but due to some insinuating circumstances, we're, we're going to record it. And then that way you guys can watch it on your own time and get go back and refresh on anything you have. And if you guys have any questions, we'll have our contact information at the end to go ahead and ask those questions. I am Trisha Salazar. I'm the camp director. I am nationally camping, National Camping School certified. I've spent the last eight years in scouting as a parent, a volunteer, and as well as a professional. My goals this year for summer camp are safety and fun for participants and our camp staff. And that's my email. Hi, my name is Michael Rogers. Uh, I've been going to Camp Thunderbird since the second grade, and this will be my eighth year on camp staff and my second year as program director. My goals for this summer, of course, is always safety, but I am enveloping a philosophy of challenge by choice this summer, making sure that your scouts are challenging themselves, but they're not getting pushed outside of their boundaries so that they can have a great summer camp experience. And there's my contact information as well. As, as always, it'll be at the end of the slideshow as well. Awesome. So our Camp Thunderbird philosophies, we have two different portions that play into our philosophy. The first one is our resident camp purpose, which is to deliver a safe and exciting Cub Scout camp destination so that all scouts have an opportunity to experience the great outdoors, learn new skills, and have fun. We're able to do this by using our code of conduct, which Camp Thunderbird uses the high ideals of the scout law as a code of conduct. Leaders and parents are responsible for their scouts' behavior, but adults are also held to the same standard and are also asked to set the right example. Very, very nice, Tricia. Moving on to the registration. Our registration for camp has closed. We are getting dangerously close to the start of camp. So thank you for completing all of your registration information and the checkout processes for your unit. Your campsites, when you arrive to camp, you will get your campsite assignment. And we are making every effort that you and your unit get to camp together. But in the spirit of scouting, you may be sharing a campsite with another unit. This summer, like last summer, bunkhouses are not being offered as accommodations. And for our general camp experience, non-scout siblings are not permitted to attend resident camp, as well as all scouts and adults attending must be registered members of the BSA. And if you guys have any issues where you need to have a refund, all cancellations and or refund requests must be submitted in writing to phc at scouting.org and the refunds are based on the date that the written request is received. And if you're removed from camp for cause, no refund will be given. We have some information here on the side as to when you can expect a 50% refund. And when, um, so as of July 5th, no refunds will be given. And we may make exceptions, but requests must be submitted within seven days after the event to be considered. And a final authority for all refunds is up to the council. And if you are expecting a campership, campership, the campership window has closed. If you have received a campership, that is amazing. We are very thankful for our campership program, but no more camperships for the 2024 summer camp season will be processed. And now the so important part is your medical information. All scouts and adults must submit their BSA health and medical form parts A, B1 and B2, and Part C. This is in accordance with the BSA policy that any participant who does not have a fully completed health form that includes the health history signed by a parent or guardian and the physical, your Part C, signed by a licensed medical professional, you will not be able to remain at camp or participate in any activities until the health form is complete and current. Current meaning as in data in the last 12 months. And this is in reference to the Guide to Safe Scouting, Section 5, Medical Information, and First Aid. No physical exams will be given at camp. And we do not take any digital. Please bring it at check-in on your first day of your camp session. Rolling on with medical information, only the current edition of the BSA Health and Medical Form will be accepted. Please look for the the number 680-001 on your health form. 
And, and please make sure that all of your personal information, including the PAC number, emergency phone numbers, and insurance information is correct before bringing that paperwork to camp. Be sure that all your allergies and your medication sections are completed and are up to date to what you're bringing to camp. Uh, also, please be sure to bring a copy of both sides of your insurance card for your medical form. It is one of the required parts of it. For those who are under military insurance, a copy of only the front of your military ID um, counts for this requirement. And all campers must have a history of all immunizations with dates. It's not okay to write up to date or current. We do require the specific dates. And then with all your medications, we ask that they are in their original, their original containers. If it is a prescription, it must have the prescription label on it. Only bring the quantity that is required for your time at camp. Partial doses must be prepared before camp. And any emergency medicine may be carried by your camper, including your EpiPen and your inhaler. And the pack may opt to dispense medication to their participants. Otherwise, all medication will be turned into our health officer. But you need to have a lockable container to dispense your medication. This can include your vehicle, as long as it's nice and lockable. Refrigeration for those who need to be refrigerated uh, is included in the health watch. And then any injections that need to be given at camp, if it cannot be done by the camper, will be done by the health officer with written permission from the parent and guardian. Okay, moving on to youth protection. All participants and staff are expected to follow youth protection guidelines whenever they are on property, as well as traveling to and from property. Any violation of youth protection guidelines should be reported immediately to the camp director. Violation of youth protection guidelines will be dealt with through proper procedures by our camp director with the oversight of our scout executive. Please, before you come to camp, review the youth protection training as well as the guide to safe scouting section on youth protection training and adult leadership. And we've provided a link here, scouting.org slash health dash and dash safety slash GSS slash GSS 01 slash. Um, you'll be able to type that into a search bar and find the information that we are referencing here. Perfect. And to get you guys all ready for camp, the first thing that you guys need to do outside of all your registration medical forms, of course, is check-in. So check-in for all our sessions start at 8.45 a.m. Staff will not be available any earlier, so 8.45 a.m. sharp. No scouts may be dropped off at camp without unit leaders or designated adults who be staying at camp. Please follow the guide to safe scouting, which means two deep leadership or buddy pairs to go ahead and make sure that we're all following our rules in this instance. Units should check in once all of the scouts and adults are present. This is gonna make checking a lot easier for you guys. And please leave all of your belongings in the car. The only things that you guys need to bring with you to check in is your medical forms, the medications that you're turning in, and or proof of your lockable container if your unit is managing your medication. Okay, moving on to how you're getting to camp, your vehicles. When arriving to Camp Thunderbird, please park in our main parking lot. Our overflow parking is across the street at the Camp Akela parking area. Overly large vehicles and vehicles with trailers will be asked to park across the street in the Camp Akela parking lot. All vehicles must be backed into their parking spot while on property and only authorized service vehicles are allowed past our gates. Uh, the safety of our scouts in this matter is our primary consideration and your full cooperation is appreciated. And then when you guys have had a great time at our camp, you get to go through the whole checkout process. So packing up your campsite is best left to scheduled campsite pack up time. We do give you guys some time for that. Please don't let packing up your campsite make you late to other events or miss other events. You guys don't want to miss out on that stuff. When your gear is packed, please stage all your gear at the entrance to your campsite and your campsite will be checked by your staff guide. Once your staff guide has said, yep, you're all good to go, we left no trace, you're going to go ahead and move your gear to your vehicles and you will collect your closeout packet from our camp commissioner. And uh, moving Moving with the leaving camp, uh, all campers, youth or adult, must check out with our camp office when leaving camp and check in when you're returning. 
If you are a part-time adult, meaning that you are taking half the time and another adult is taking another half of the time while you're at camp, please come to the office with the adult that is replacing you so that you can check in and check out at the same time. If you are leaving camp early, please let us know so we can collect your campers' documents and send them home with you. Uh, if you are a visitor coming to pick up a youth, be prepared to present identification at the camp office. This will be checked across that scout's health form in the authorized to take youth to and from events session. So if you are expecting a visitor or somebody that is not at camp with your scout to take your scout home, please fill out that section with the people you expect to be taking your scout home. And we recommend once campers arrive for their session, we strongly ask that you don't leave until your session ends so that you can have a great time out at Camp Thunderbird. As the scout's leader, you'll often know the needs of your scout more than our staff. And our staff at certain times may be able to assist with supervision, but their main duty is providing a quality camp experience for all of our campers. Therefore, the duty of supervision falls on the unit and the adults of that unit. Okay, moving, keeping with the idea of a good example, we're gonna talk about uniform. Each scout and their scout leader should have a complete scout uniform for their session at camp. And some units we understand have different expectations for uniform etiquette. So please follow your home unit standards. If you only require the scout uniform tucked in, that's what we require. All right. If your unit has the pants, we recommend that you continue to follow that uh, uniform etiquette expectation. And as we know, Cub Scouts respond best to a good example, and leaders are encouraged to set that great example by wearing their full uniform properly. And going right along with all of our clothing, all Scouts and leaders are wearing appropriate clothing, uh, who are wearing inappropriate clothing, would be asked to change. So as an example, inappropriate clothing can be clothing with an inappropriate fit or display messages that doesn't align with scouting's ideals. All campers are to wear closed footwear at all times. This means that closed footwear means that we can't see any part of your foot that is within your shoe. The only exception to this is at the waterfront and water socks are encouraged at our waterfront. And then clothing at the waterfront is an important consideration. We recommend clothing that prioritizes fit and fashion fit and function over fashion. <laughs> that is an important consideration, Trisha. Mm -hmm. Moving on, we want to address discipline and hazing as well as the buddy system. Normally, the discipline of a camper is the responsibility of the unit leader in charge at camp. However, all serious discipline problems must be reported to the camp director immediately. Under no circumstances shall a camper be deprived of food, isolated, subjected to corporal punishment, physical exercise, or verbally abused. Also, initiations and hazing are strictly prohibited. Moving on to the buddy system, scouts always need to be with a buddy whenever they're walking around camp. Buddy pairs may only be single gender, not co-ed. Buddy pairs can only be made between youth members. And the rule of thumb that we say for the buddy system is line of sight. If you can't see your buddy, find them. And finally, the buddy system applies to all buildings in camp. Now, the only exception being single user restrooms and showers like our porta potties or our shower house where that buddy scout should wait just outside. Now, the other exception to this is our multi-user restroom within the Dale Low. There, this is a restroom where multiple people can be using the restroom at a single time. We ask that buddy pairs enter the bathroom as a buddy pair and exit the bathroom as a buddy pair so that they can stay as a buddy. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. The buddy pair is so important at camp and we will be checking as you guys go throughout your visit there. <laughs> and so visitors, we welcome, uh, you guys are welcome on the property. However, we ask that you guys keep your stay to a reasonable time and follow the following rules. All visitors are to check in at the camp office when they arrive and then also check out when they leave. BSA resident camp policy states that all adults will wear a wristband while at camp and those are checked they are available at check-in. If a visitor wishes to stay for a meal, they could purchase a meal ticket in the camp office. Only registered scouts are allowed to stay overnight in camp. Leave all pets at home, no exceptions. Don't bring your bird or your lizards or anything like that. 
And if you're picking up a camper, your ID will be checked against the camper's health form in the section authorized to take you to and from event. Okay. Moving on to this section, drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. Illicit drugs and alcohol are forbidden at Camp Thunderbird, including the use of marijuana. Tobacco use, including smokeless tobacco and vaping products, can only be used in the posted area behind the dining hall near to the dumpster, not dear to the dumpster, near to the dumpster. Uh, you will see signs if you are a user of tobacco products. Uh, litter is the responsibility of the user, and there will be litter receptacles. And any violation of this policy can result in immediate removal for cause. Per National Boy Scouts of America regulations, personal firearms and archery equipment will not be permitted at any camp session. You will use our equipment that is provided at camp has all been checked and good to go safe. And fireworks are definitely never permitted under any circumstances at our campsite. Moving forward, we want to talk about emergencies. In the event of an emergency, the camp director shall be notified immediately. If they are not available, the program director, business manager, or camp ranger shall be notified. Don't worry too much. You'll be introduced to all of these people when you come out to camp. And if the emergency is of a medical nature, please contact the health officer without delay. The emergencies that we want to specifically look for and want to be notified are, are unexpected emergencies that can cause harm to our campers, such as uncontained fires, dangerous animals, lost campers, da or dangerous weather. And property damage. If a piece of property out at camp is damaged, the units will be held responsible for that damage to their campsite. And if it was not in identified on the initial site inspection, you should be doing this with your staff guide when you first make it to your campsite. Now, so we have some other questions that we get asked pretty regularly. And the first one being, what if we arrive early? Camp staff are not available until check-in at 845. There will be post-it signage for restrooms that are available prior to check-in, so you don't have to stay holed up in your car the whole time. Can the camp accommodate food allergies? Yes. Camp can accommodate common food allergies and preferences. All food allergies listed in your registration will be accommodated. If you have not been contacted yet about your food restriction, please contact the camp director immediately and we'll get that figured out. Is the camp accessible for disabled persons? Yes, all of our buildings are accessible. All program areas have accessibility. And if, you, if there's a concern, please go ahead and let me know as a camp director. And do we have showers? Yeah, we, we do. We have single occupancy showers located at our shower house and we have an additional shower unit behind the Delo Johnson Training Center. Our showers even have warm water, so please feel free to use them. <laughs> yes. What are some other questions? Uh, we often hear, can adults bring cell phones? Yes, we do ask that you do use them away from our scouts to prevent homesickness issues. And just as forewarning, camp has spotty coverage at best and batteries do drain quickly. Can you buy extra camp t-shirts? Not during camp. Now, after the camp season, any extra shirts will be available in the Camp Thunderbird Scout Shop. This is to make sure that every camper coming to camp gets a camp shirt. Where are our toilets located? Well, there are numerous porta potties near our campsites and around program areas. There is a traditional multi user restroom in the Delo Johnson Training Center if you prefer a flushing toilet rather than a porta potty. And what if a camper needs to take medicine every morning? Uh, the scout should turn in that medication to the health officer and report to the health officer every morning to receive their med medication. If the unit has opted to dispense medication, they will receive it from their unit leader instead. And then this is some really great information for you guys to know how to get a hold of us. So first, the camp director is me, Trisha. That's my email. We have Michael, which is our lovely program director. We also have Tyler Fine, who's our business manager. He's my right-hand man. Uh, he's going to help me out with a lot of stuff. And then if you need anything for the kitchen, food, and ideas on that, we got Cindy Iverson as well. Well, we just wanted to make sure, and thank you for your time. Thank you for reviewing this. Getting prepared for camp is a big task. And knowing the information that we presented to you today is important for having a great experience out at camp and not being caught off guard by anything. So 
thank you again for reviewing this video and we look forward to seeing you on property. Yes, thank you.